Okay, hi. Um, this is Jay Sok An, and he's robot chef from SK Telecom. Um, so it's about airship, but um, you heard about airship, right? A lot through the, this summit. And the uh, ATT used for the airship to change uh, for the production, and SK also used airship for our production deployment, but we use it very differently. So today we are going to talk about how we use airship um, project. Uh, especially, uh, there is a subject, sub project called Armada. So, we are talking about that project uh, specifically. So, SKT has been participated in OpenStack HAM project and LRC project uh, from the beginning, but we had a different constraint in our environment and um, different requirements. So, uh, we have different use case uh, from the AT&T. So, I hope this presentation will give some hint or help someone uh, who wants to try LRC, but because of any reason, not for airship itself, but with your own needs based selection of airship projects. So that's our case. So I hope we can help on that. So before going into detail, I just briefly will tell you uh, what we are doing currently. So um, we are uh, using Open the Camp project and airship and Kubernetes and Corolla and lots of other open source uh, tools and to, uh, to make a infrastructure delivery system. So we call TACO. Um, I, I like TACO. Uh, I, I studied in Texas, so that's, uh, <laughs> we have this name. But it stands for SKT or Container OpenStack. Um, we come up with it later. Anyway, so we build TACO. It, it's our internal product name. But it's basically just a combination of Airship and OpenStack Cam and Kubernetes. Um, and uh, we have um, kind of ultimate plan uh, from uh, this stage. So our plan is extending and advancing uh, this infrastructure delivery system so that we can deliver a required infrastructure. Um, it can be OpenStack. It can be Kubernetes. Uh, uh, it can be delivered on top of on-premise infrastructure like uh, we do now or on top of private cloud or public cloud if it's Kubernetes deployment. And um, you can add like a necessary tools. If it's like a machine running job, we can add machine running supporting tools on top of Kubernetes. So the basically, SKT wants to have a simple, very flexible uh, delivery system uh, to deliver whatever infrastructure we need um, for our future uh, needs. So if you look at that, that's just my conceptual uh, picture. Uh, but you can have bare metal and current OpenStack. That's what we do now. But you can have uh, Kubernetes on top of public cloud or Kubernetes on top of on-premise, but in standard and simple way. So that's our ultimate goal. Um, so to do that, um, we think these four concepts um, in this slide are totally necessary to have. And this is exactly the same characteristic um, LRC project defines. So it's from airship slide. So in other words, the VSKT completely agrees on what airship aims for. Um, so that is the main reason SKT is actively participating in airship and opens the camp project. But we approach it slightly differently. So I talk about um, in this later slide. Um, this is uh, if you um, if you saw like uh, any airship presentation, you will be familiar with this concept. So it should be declarative. Um, so you need to have a, just one declarative document to do everything you want to do in your infrastructure. And we use containers as a basic unit of software delivery. And also we aim for one simple workflow, same workflow for every lifecycle management uh, task. So even if you're doing uh, like a new deployment or update or upgrade, uh, whatever you do, it, it should be just one simple and same way to do those jobs, uh, to be very predictable. And it should be very flexible for the different architectures and infrastructure software we are delivering. Um, so with that background, um, I'll actually start talking about our story, how we started and how we are currently using it and what we want to do from now on. So there are two main projects for us, like I said. The first one is OpenStack Ham. 
you know, uh, do you know often what the option tag ham is? Um, okay, so I'll not describe in detail. Uh, this is collection of ham chart uh, to deploy OpenStack. But not only OpenStack, uh, but related services like uh, LMA, logging, monitoring, alerting, uh, LMA stack. You do have those chart for the older LMA chart. So uh, with OpenStack ham and with Cola or Rocky uh, container image, you can actually deploy OpenStack as a container on top of Kubernetes. And then there's Airship. Um, for me, it's more like an Airship fleet because Airship consists of uh, several um, tool chains. So what Airship does is you define and generate a the declarative document. Uh, this document includes everything you want to provision in your site from bare metal provisioning and Kubernetes deployment and SAP deployment and uh, the finally OpenStack deployment. So you define those documents and you throw into Airship uh, toolchain, then Airship toolchain automatically render those documents and provision bare metals and configure the bare metals and provision Kubernetes and provision OpenStack for you. So it's a very simple way to manage uh, your infrastructure. Uh, but for us, we only use an Airship, not all the fleet of Airship. We use the project called Armada. The Armada is like a, a tool for managing multiple ham chart with dependencies by centralizing all configuration in a single Armada YAML manifest. And it provides lifecycle hooks for the old Helm release. And basically, this Armada is provide a rich set of features missing from the the basic HEM client. So features are really necessary for managing multiple chart all together. So we started to open the HEM chart. Uh, then we had uh, the problem to managing those multiple chart. So it was natural for us to adapt Armada because it solved our like a facing problem. So we uh, from the start we only used Armada among the airship um, project. Uh, but why was that? So there is some of the constraint at the beginning. Um, beginning, I mean, when we start looking into the possibility to put OpenStack on Kubernetes at late 2016, and we had those constraints. Uh, we, my team was in charge of like, uh, whatever we want to do on OpenStack, so we had full control over the OpenStack itself. So we, we could do a, a anything on that, but we didn't have control over bare metal provisioning because the operation team has their own way of the provision bare metal. So it was out of scope at the beginning for us. We just need to use that. And also SEP was a very successful independent R&D effort inside SKT. Um, there was a separate R&D team actually developing the SEP for the old flash drive and make appliance uh, out of that. So we had to use their solution. We have to cooperate with them uh, to uh, deploy the SEP. So we didn't have any, like uh, the SEP deployment, SEP provision is out of scope for us. And even though um, the SKT is telco, the, the first demand um, came from IT department, like a private cloud, or they want uh, infrastructure for the, their VDI system, virtual desktop interface, or the OSS, the BSS system, so we had to deal with those IT requirements. Then the network uh, came along afterward. Um, if you're comparing network cloud to the IT, IT, IT cloud, IT cloud has variety of requirements than network cloud. So we have to deal with very different type of requirements. Um, so that was our constraint. So if you look at timeline, um, um, in 2016, uh, when we started looking into those uh, pulling open stack of Kubernetes, luckily we found like-minded ones in early stage, like an at and dev team, or uh, they, uh, they also started to uh, looking into ham chart. So we were able to collaborate together, and so the SK was able to do the full participation of open stack ham project from the beginning. But we had those uh, constraints. And also, we had already uh, made some initial tool decision uh, to provision the Kubernetes, and we decided to use Kubespray, which is Ansible 
um, for the deploying the Kubernetes. Um, and then in 2017, LSTAP initiated as an upstream project, but by then we already used the Cube Spirit. And um, so, and bare metal provisioning was out of our scope. So, uh, we are not able to um, actually use whole airship uh, tools, but we found out that, as I said in the previously, Armada was very helpful in solving our facing problem. So, we decided to uh, leverage Armada and contribute together on the Armada project. Um, so, 2018, the, the airship, as you know, became the pilot project. And uh, this year, at and using Airship and OpenTechM to do the production deployment. And at this stage, um, SKT is really navigating again on how we can align with community effort more. So what we have now, what we end up with now, right now. So um, we actually end up with developing Ansible, we call it Taco Play. Uh, to do everything before the OpenStack deployment. So the bare metal provision is not yet. Uh, we are working on the ironic. But with Taco Play, Ansible playbooks, uh, there is one just Ansible playbook command to do the everything I listed in here. So we do host configuration with Ansible. Uh, we do Docker registry installation, Docker installation. And we are using SAP Ansible from SAP community to do the SAP installation. And we are using Kubespray to do the Kubernetes. And we actually recently started uh, looking into Kube ADM. So we use Kubespray, but leveraging Kube ADM to actually deploy and manage the Kubernetes. That's what they do. And after we have Kubernetes, then we use Armada and Hamchart um, to do everything we put on top of Kubernetes. So uh, we end up with, on the left hand, we have Ansible to do everything till Kubernetes. And then we have Armada and Airship, part of Airship, and open the ham chart to do everything on top of Kubernetes. So that's our current um, tools. And uh, we have but some of the ongoing effort. Uh, we decide to leverage one more uh, project from the Airship uh, based on the what we really need, uh, what problem is. So that's deckhand. Uh, there was a very good presentation on the deckhand uh, yesterday, so you can uh, look into what deckhand is. Deckhand is simply the, the tool to manage uh, manifest. Uh, since we do have like uh, several different deployment right now, there is uh, several different Armada manifest we use, and we uh, start feeling we really need to manage all those different Armada manifest the better and that can provide that capability. So we decide to extend one more step into LRC project and use Deckhand and Armada uh, for our needs. Uh, then we are, probably, we are looking into Ironic as well. And for the SAP installation, we are using SAP Ansible, so deploy SAP just on bare metal. But we start looking into um, containerized SAP deployment option. The Open Tech Ham has SAP chart, so they deploy the SAP on the Kubernetes. Uh, we are not using it yet, so we are looking into the Rook and OpenTech M step chart or step answer with uh, containers. Basically, we are following how step community is evolving on this space. And uh, we are going to um, convert to the container based deployment, but uh, we will follow what step community does. And there's more topics. So, since our ultimate goal is deploying infrastructure on top of on-premise or public cloud or private cloud. The Kubernetes cluster API, uh, which is happening uh, effort uh, in Kubernetes community, is kind of important for us. And I heard a very great story during the summit that they, the ironic is interested in uh, being integrated in the cluster API, so being first bare metal provisioning API for the um, cluster API SIG, that will be fantastic for us. And then there is all the security on the containers, especially when you're deploying OpenStack in containers. There are lots of security problems, so we want to focus on more on that. And LMA, uh, but in addition to setting up tools, but we are interested in to the real operational knowledge integration into this LMA stack so that out of box from the community uh, software, we can have real operational knowledge into the system. 
And also, we um, are looking into more Kubernetes tools like Istio and Kubeflow uh, for us. Um, I have to say that although we are using just part of Airship, uh, but Airship community is very supportive. Um, Airship community is very open to adopt different use cases like us. And so we start uh, discussing around like uh, this bring your own uh, concept. So Airship um, is looking into bring your own like a bare metal provisioning. Uh, if you have your own bare metal provisioning mechanism, you can just uh, plug into the Airship and use it uh, as it is. And, or you can bring your own set cluster, um, or you can bring your own Kubernetes deployment method and just plug into Airship and it will work um, um, well. And that's the concept Airship uh, community is aiming for as well. So it, it's very beneficial for us because we need those concepts uh, if we want to uh, fully align with Airship um, uh, community. And also, we are also open to collaborate with anyone who has our similar requirement as us. So this is our one of efforts to document integrating uh, existing step into OpenStack Ham, which is not the default way of OpenStack Ham does, but our use case. So we are working together to make those different use cases available for the community. So um, we are very happy or open to collaborate with uh, anyone in the community who has a very similar requirement as us. So that's basic story of us uh, using just part of Airship and extending more and more based on our needs. And uh, from now on, the robot chair, uh, my colleague, will actually talk about how we leverage those armada in our CI CD pipeline, uh, which is very important for us. So it will be uh, interesting. So. Okay. Hi. Uh my name is Robert Choi, and I'll briefly explain uh, our CI-CD pipeline and how Armada is used in our pipeline. So here's our full deployment pipeline for TACO. Uh, this actually used in our production deployment. And among this, uh, as Jason mentioned before, the bare metal provisioning is done manually now, and we are going to automate that soon. Uh, Ironic is one of the candidate tool for that. So once the OS installation is done, we install SAP using Ansible, install Docker and Kubernetes using KubeSpray, which is also Ansible playbook, and then deploy OpenStack and others using Amada and OpenStack Ham chart. So uh, all of these tasks are wrapped into one single playbook, which we named Taco Play. And all of these tasks are scattered into many jobs in our Jenkins. So I'll show you some more detail about our OpenStack deployment pipeline. Uh, it's a typical CI pipeline comprised of unit test and integration test and promotion stage. On the left side, we have uh, mirror repositories for OpenStack upstream source code and other upstream code. And wrapper repositories that have our custom configurations. So those two are merged and then uh, go through all the pipelines on the right side. So actual pipeline consists of two sub-pipelines. The first one is image build pipeline, which is uh, building container images of all OpenStack services. It fetches OpenStack source and Cola source from upstream and build container images using Cola build tool and then pushes the built images into our internal Docker registry uh, once the unit test is passed. The other is actual deployment pipeline for each OpenStack service. It deploys each service with the built container images to Kubernetes cluster using OpenStack ham chart and Armada, and then performs some scenario tests, uh, which is uh, OpenStack Rally project. Uh, in this picture, you can see the blue star marks here, and that means the stages in which Armada is used. So uh, what's Armada and what it does? It simply deploys collection of chart at once with a single manifest. 
And what does manifest contain? Uh, all the values. So as you know, you can't use original chart directly because you need to customize values so that uh, they are relevant to your environment. So the Amada manifest contains all those necessary values for all Helm chart. Okay. So there are two use cases of Armada in our CI pipeline. Uh, we had to cover multiple use cases with unified deployment tool and as, lo as less number of manifests as possible for simplicity issue. So one is uh, full OpenStack deployment for integration test. The other is individual service deployment for some scenario test, as I mentioned. The first one. Um, deploying all services is as simple as running a mother apply command with some parameters such as till endpoint and timeout values. It's pretty simple. But the second one, uh, to deploy some subset of chart, you need a little more work. The manifest hierarchy looks like the bottom. The manifest contains uh, many chart groups each of which has many charts in turn. So what you need to do is uh, to specify chart groups you want to deploy, and also a list of charts uh, for each chart group. Of course, it's not easy to do this manually every time, so we need to automate that process. And here's actual code used in our Jenkins job for automatically composing necessary parameters for the previous Armada command. Uh, it's a Groovy code and very simple code. So uh, from now on, I uh, briefly explain some issues I have gone through. So while using Armada, there have been some issues. So I'll show you one of those and how we fixed that issue. Actually, it's a corner case rather than issue. So the problem was that the Amada process hangs for timeout period. Uh, in other words, it's not finished yet until it timed out, even though all the ne necessary parts are deployed already. So for example, if you specify uh, the timeout of 3600, which is one hour, then the process doesn't finish it for an hour. So weird thing is that it happens only in our CI-CD environment, and it's working fine in other members' local develop environment. We spent many days trying to figure out why, and it turns out that uh, it related to how Armada communicate with Tiller, which is Helm server, and Kubernetes API. So Armada loads load Kubernetes endpoint configs in two different ways. So if Amada runs as container inside some Kubernetes cluster, it load in cluster configs and directly connect to Tilo and Kube API in the same cluster. On the other hand, if Amada runs outside Kubernetes cluster, it tries to load kube config file from default config location to find out the proper Kubernetes API endpoint. Having said that, um, here's our CISD environment. We use Jenkins Kubernetes plugin, which deploys the Jenkins slave as Kubernetes pod. We pre-built various slave images, including the Armada one. So when job runs, the Armada slave is created, and then it deploys OpenStack cluster into another Kubernetes cluster in a new VM, uh, which is on the right side. We use a Kubernetes all-in-one VM for each deployment job for isolation purpose. So in this case, um, the Amada on the left side should communicate with Tiller and Kube API in that VM on the right side. But since it's running inside the Kubernetes cluster, it uses in cluster config and it asks the long cube API about the status of all the OpenStack service part. 
And they keep thinking that uh, none of these parts are ready yet because they cannot see any part on the left cluster. So it was really corner case for us. So as a short term solution, uh, we added some parameter like dash dash cube config to specify the cube config file location to load, even if Armada runs inside the Kubernetes cluster. It's not yet submitted to upstream yet, but it will be proposed soon by our team member. Uh, likewise, we uh, have gone through many issues, and we are helping to make it better. And it's, in fact, it's really uh, getting better compared to the initial stage. It's quite stable now, and it covers many use cases. Other than Amada, among airship projects, we also considering to introduce Deccan. Uh, it manages many various uh, manifest files for each site. So it really helps to uh, managing our ma various uh, manifest sites. So that's it for now. And I pass it to Jessup again. Thank you. Yeah, so in this year, using Armada and OpenStackM, uh, we are doing or did a five production deployment. And um, we are not only delivering OpenStack, we are also delivering Kubernetes. So if you look at the risk uh, for the, the ML infrastructure, which need to uh, leverage GPU uh, resources, we deploy Kubernetes. Um, then using Armada, to deploy all the LMA tools to operate Kubernetes on top of those Kubernetes. And also we, um, deployed, we deployed Kubernetes in production to, um, to be used as a big data platform, like a Druid uh, pod and Druid containers. Um, then actually we uh, did production deployment uh, for the SKT private cloud or the virtual desktop, um, like a B2B service infrastructures. And also we are working on actually putting our OpenStack uh, into uh, our 5 g telco environment as a Veeam. So, so Armada, even though it's in OpenStack hand project or Airship project to deploy OpenStack, it's very beneficial for us uh, to do a Kubernetes deployment. So if you look at this, um, this is chart group. So when you do the OpenStack deployment, Actually, you define four chat group uh, in our actual Amarda manifest. The first one is OpenStack Infra, which include like a MariaDB and RabbitMQ and those uh, system component uh, to run the OpenStack. Then second one, OpenStack Service. Uh, this includes all the OpenStack services, including Report and OVS and Keystone, Glance and Cinder, whatever you need for the OpenStack. And then the third one is the Monitoring Infra, which include Prometheus and Grafana. And the uh, last one is uh, logging infra, which include um, EFK, Elasticsearch, Front, Bit, and Kibana, and LDAP. So we have those four different uh, chart group. And when you deploy um, your infrastructure, you can select which group you want to uh, do. So for the OpenStack deployment, we do all the four. But uh, in this case, we commented out logging and monitoring because this environment had legacy monitoring system, so we didn't need, we didn't need to uh, install our own monitoring system. So we did install just to OpenStack. So um, different requirement, different like uh, deployment uh, the architecture, you just need to select which group to deploy. And when you do the Kubernetes deployment, uh, you don't see any OpenStack related group, but actually you deploy logging infra and monitoring infra um, on top of Kubernetes so that you can provide the operation monitoring tools uh, for the, your Kubernetes. So the Armada manifest make us, uh, make our life very simple as a, a delivery, or we are both doing development and delivery together. So as a development part, and we just need to manage a, one document per one site. And this document is very similar um, across the doors or the deployment site. We just need to uh, look at what's the different, uh, based on different requirements. So uh, managing those different uh, OpenStack or Kubernetes deployment site was like a simply down to the managing a document uh, for us. Um, so the Armada in this um, um, way helped a lot um, for us to deploy various different kind of infrastructure. So that's 
um, everything we have right now. And um, if you have any question, or you can contact uh, this the email address or um, IRS handler I put on there. Um, and if you are in Asia region, um, um, I'm the one who like, uh, like the, on on the, the I mean on the IRS standard because most of the OpenStack ham development is happening in USA. So if you are Asian, there you're sleeping while you have actual questions. So I can help on that. Anyway, so any question? Um, sorry, I. Name of tools for. Ah, oh, oh, right now we are just uh, putting Druid. 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 Yeah, Druid plus Druid top of Druid. That's what okay. we are looking into uh, putting some of the more behavior platform um, on that. Ah, it's very nice to see actually that you can deploy all the services on Kubernetes with a single Armada command. But what if you also need to, to apply some bootstrapping scripts, for instance, in a database uh, to actually define the databases or access uh, control and stuff like that? Is that possible with Armada? Sorry, I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot hear the theory, so I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I So the question was, uh, can you apply some bootstrap script um, in Armada? So uh, what kind of bootstrap script you are thinking of? Yeah, I guess that uh, that kind of bootstrapping is uh, can be done by Helm chart itself, not by Armada. But uh, if there is some task that cannot be handled by Helm chart, uh, you can specify some pre-installation script and post-installation script as well. So, yeah. So usually, uh, when you deploy a database uh, with Helm chart. You can define any job, so the, just like a job will um, be right. So doing those uh, user setting and this init job, and it will disappear after job is done. So there's concept of job in Kubernetes. You can define that in Hamchart. Any other question? All right. Thank you.